Welcome to GardenWise Adventures. My name is Malie and today I wanted to talk a little bit more about citrus trees. Now I had created a video a little while ago about how I grow citrus trees indoors. I'm in Utah zone 6 7 so they can't grow outdoors. I have them in pots and I move them indoors into my grow room. Now one thing that I didn't talk about is how I pollinate my citrus trees. Now obviously there's no bees, there's no bugs, well there's fungus gnats, but fungus gnats are not going to be pollinating my citrus trees. But there are no insects inside to pollinate my citrus trees. So I wanted to demonstrate on two of my trees that are flowering right now and tell you how I pollinate them. So we're going to start first with my lovely little Australian bloodlime. I absolutely love this little bush. It's about a it's not quite a year old. I got it last spring and it was in a one gallon pot, moved it up to a two gallon pot. And since then it's been happily flowering every few months and setting fruit. And now that I've moved it indoors, I would like it to set more fruit, but I need to help it with pollination. So let's get you a little bit closer and show you what the flowers look like. So here's what it looks like. This is a little more than a foot and a half tall. Um, supposedly they can get up to eight feet tall. We're just going to have to see how this one grows. It's just got a very interesting growth habit to it. We'll do a little bit more pruning as we learn more about this bush and as it grows more. But right now it's a shaggy bush with a lot of little flowers. So we've got them in different stages. We've got a lot of little buds. This is what the buds look like. This is an older flower that I've been pollinating. This is a newer flower that just opened. Here's another one that's just opened. And here's one that I pollinated in the past that's forming a fruit. Let me show you a little bit what the larger fruits look like. Now this is one that was pollinated when I first got the plant. So in the spring it, when I received the plant it was flowering and this is a fruit that formed then. I'm not sure how long it takes them to ripen. I think it takes a good eight to nine months and we're not at that point yet. But um, this is the first time I've grown these fruit. So I, I'll, put a, I'll put a picture on the screen of what they're going to look like when they're ripened. So that one is getting close. Well, that one's about halfway there. I think they get a little bit bigger than that. Here's another one that's a little bit further behind. So there's a lot of possibility for fruit this coming year and I'm really excited about it. Here's another one that we're waiting to see if the pollination helped. So there's a couple of different ways we can go about pollinating this. The easiest way is just to get a q-tip or a paintbrush, either one works. Take it to your flower, one that is newly opened. Rub it Rub it against the pollen of that flower. Now it's hard to see, but I have a few grains of pollen on there. And then we take it to another newly opened flower and rub the grains onto that flower. Now there's another way that I found works better for flowers this small. The branches are very flexible. So what I've been doing that's worked better is I just take these two flowers and rub them together. So I go through once or twice a day just because you know it's fun and you get to smell them and they smell so good. I wish we had smell a vision here so that you could smell how wonderful they smell. But that's what I've been doing a couple of times a day, making sure all of the newly opened flowers are pollinated and we've been able to help it set fruit that way. So here we have my improved Meyer lemon. And in the back, you can see a bunch of flowers. This one's been flowering really regularly for me, and it's been forming quite a bit of fruit. I'm really excited about it. Right here, we have a bunch of fruit that formed in the last flowering, which is about three weeks ago, and now it's starting to flower again, and you can see a new little fruit forming there, surrounded by a bunch of buds. Now, most citrus will produce a ton of fruit but it will only ho hold what the tree is able to hold. So not all, of these, not all of these little fruits are going to stay on the tree. So once they get about this size here, 
you can be pretty sure that the tree is going to hold the fruit barring any drought or, or fertilizer issues. The one back here is still small enough that it could start to yellow and fall off. Here's another one at the size where I'm not quite sure I'm going to be able to keep it yet. Now I use a Q-tip to polish these. You can see I've been using this one quite a bit. Sorry, it's not in focus, but these flowers are larger and they are easier to pollinate. So what I do So what I'll do is I'll take these flowers, run the Q-tip over them, make sure I hit any of the newly opened flowers, and there we have pollinated flowers. And not all citrus flowers year-round. Mostly it's my Meyer lemon. And it seems like this little tiny bloodline is flowering quite a bit, but my Satsuma mandarin orange is only going to flower once a year. So it doesn't take a lot of work. It's a lot of fun. It gets you up close to the flowers and gives you the chance to be able to sniff them and really enjoy yourself. And now I would love to hear if you're growing citrus indoors and if you've been pollinating it yourself. And if you pollinate your citrus indoors, what do you use? Do you use Q-tips or do you use something else? Hopefully this video has been helpful to you. If this video has been helpful to you, I hope you like, subscribe, share it with your friends and go have a wonderful garden adventure.